Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to the Farmer's Table here on this YouTube channel. We talk about all things real food, preserving it, preparing it, and enjoying it. My name is Jess. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about seasoning cast iron pans, give you some tips on that. I hope that if you have a cast iron pan that has been pining away for your attention in your cabinet, that this will give you the courage to pull that out. Even if it's looking a little orange and crusty, uh, it's not too far gone. You can bring it back to life and it could be Become not only your favorite piece of cookware but a legacy piece of cookware. Cast iron lasts a really long time. It is a great addition to a real food kitchen and I would love the honor of being the one to convince you to use it. I'm sitting on my front steps today. I'm going to work on this cast iron pan over here uh, outside. It's not necessary. In many cases, you could totally do this in your house. I just came out front because there's like 50 kids in there and it's really loud. And I went into a little antique store. Uh, I don't know, it's been a couple of months ago. And I found this cast iron pan. Um, it's it's really not in terrible shape. It's definitely a little bit rusty. Uh, this is a Griswold, which is a, is a very old brand of cast iron. If you ever find one that's Griswold and it's like cheap, I think I paid 18 bucks for this, which is a really good deal. Had this pan been seasoned and in really great condition, it would have cost a lot more than that. If you ever find one of these, it's, it's good, good to snap them up. But I grabbed it knowing that I could bring Bring it back to life and I thought that it would be cool to have. If you buy a new cast iron pan they come pre-seasoned and what seasoning is what makes cast iron so awesome is that though cast iron itself is incredibly porous um, whenever it's seasoned there's a very thin layer of oil or fat that has essentially been baked onto the pan it seals the porousness of the cast iron effectively making it non-stick and antimicrobial. There seems to be a lot of misconception about seasoning of cast iron pans. Uh, I saw a meme once online that showed a dishwasher full of cast iron. It said, oh, I'm gonna, you know, make my girlfriend really happy. I washed all of her pans. And it's like, do not put soap on the cast iron. In actuality, you kind of can put soap on cast iron. If it's a really, really, really well seasoned pan, a little bit of soap on it is not going to damage that. However, any cast iron pan that sits in soapy water, um, essentially that can break down that coating of baked on fat. And so when we get a cast iron pan, either an old one that we want to bring back to life, I mean, this pan is very well, you know, many decades old, or if you buy a new one, even though it says pre-season, you may want to go ahead and put whatever pan you have through the process that I'm about to show you because it's just going to make it more effective at being non-stick. It will make it easier to clean. And actually, I'm kind of of the mind that if you can find something for a really good deal, if it's in really bad shape and you can make it usable again, in my opinion, that makes things even more valuable to me. In fact, one of my favorite cast iron pans, I still remember it was very, very, very rusted, covered in orange, caked on rust when I got it for 25 cents at a garage sale. And it is gloriously smooth now. It has cooked many an egg in my kitchen. And I'm proud of that pan because, you know, it took a little elbow grease, it took a little love, but it reflects my intention, which I like. The process of seasoning, very simple. Uh, you want to take your pan and the first thing you need to do is get it really clean and get the rust off. Now in the case of this pan that is really not in terrible shape, I'll show you here. I mean there's there's a little bit of rust. You can see where this probably got set in like another pan. There's like a spot here that it's really, really rusty and it's very textured here. I'm assuming this got sat in something and sat in water. Uh, that's where you get a lot of damage. If you've got one that's just caked, this is not a non-toxic option. I'm going to tell you right now. I know the organic mamas are going to come after me, but um, oven cleaner. I don't need that for this one. It's not that dirty. But if you've got one that is just like really bad, the rest is caked on, spray it down entirely with oven cleaner front and back and then let that sit on it for a couple of hours and then come in and scrub that off. You want to just get the rust off. Um, if it's mild rust like this, if it's just some spots, just take it into some soapy water. This is my outside dishwashing washing situation since my kids were all in there. Normally I would just do this in the sink. I'm just going to scrub this down. I'm using a regular sponge. The sponge will probably be ruined at the end. That's fine. So 
the sponge took most of the rust that was on the inside off. However, here on the back where it was worst, it's still a little chunky, it's still a little orange. So, I also have some steel wool here. Sometimes you need to get some real elbow grease into it and really get some pressure on your scrubbing. Alright, let's see. Let's dip it. So if you do a search about seasoning cast iron, you'll see multiple resources will tell you not to use steel wool. The reason for that is that if you, let's say you bought a seasoned, pre-seasoned cast iron pan, or let's say you have a pan like I have another pan here, I was just gonna go ahead and re-season. Um, I've been cooking in this pan for years. It's got a ton of seasoning on it, but I had noticed the other day that there are a few spots on it that are really just not being nonstick. Stuff is really sticking to them, which tells me that probably what happened was um, something got a little burnt on it. I'm assuming probably one of my kids doing the dishes let it sit and soak and then scrubbed it with something like steel wool and they probably scrubbed the seasoning off a little bit and so I was just gonna get it clean and re-season it. Uh, steel wool this will scrub seasoning off. In the case of like this pan it doesn't really matter if I use steel wool. Oh hey Katie. Um, because I'm trying to re-season the whole thing so I'm not trying to preserve anything but you do want to be really careful scrubbing your cast iron pans with this. You can, but you just should be aware that you could unintentionally damage your seasoning. And I say that as a person, like we use steel wool in our kitchen. We scrub our cast iron with steel wool. Mostly it's fine. Occasionally one of our pans comes up a little bit less nonstick than I like, and so I just re-season it. Cast iron does not have to be fussy. You do not have to baby it the way that people sometimes act. For me, the beauty of cast iron is even if you royally screw it up, even if you've come outside to wash a pan out, leave it out front for two months and it's completely caked with rust, you can bring it back. Like, it's the opposite of needing to be babied. You could technically just completely abuse it and it would still serve you mostly okay, so. Oh, that water is filthy. I think that this one is probably about as good as it's gonna get. Some people will take like a grinder if they've got like a really bad case of rust buildup um, in texture and they'll grind it off. I'm not trying to do that here. This will be fine. So you can see there's actually still a little that looks orange, but it's just not coming off. But a lot of this that was very textured, I've got that scrubbed off and the inside very smooth and lovely and so the next step is to build a new layer of seasoning on this pan check out that rusty water it's pretty gnarly all right I had to come inside to do this properly my kids are gonna try not to interrupt so I've got my two pans which I've just scrubbed clean and I want to dry them off as entirely as possible with a towel and then I'm gonna put them over on the stovetop on like medium heat and just give them a few minutes on that medium heat to warm up and really fully dry off because cast iron is so porous when i scrub all the seasoning off and it's in water it can soak up a lot of moisture so i don't want to season a pan that potentially has moisture trapped inside of it because that's just going to lead to more rust to start, I wanna preheat my oven to 450 degrees. So while we wait for those to warm up and fully dry, I wanna talk about oil selection. So what we are looking for is to polymerize an oil or fat on the surface of this pan, which is to say we want to cook it and bake it to the point that that oil transforms into being really hardened. That will create the barrier between the porous cast iron and whatever it is that we're gonna be cooking in it. 
pretty much any oil will work. However, uh, you definitely do want to put a little bit of thought into what oil you use. Namely, you want to use an oil that has a high smoke point. If you use an oil that has a low smoke point, for instance, like olive oil has a 350 degree smoke point. If I were to take my cast iron and then put it in a 400 degree oven, the oil that's actually caked onto my cast iron is going to start smoking. So for a lot of people, they think that their cast, they're like, I tried cooking with cast iron, it was super smoky. That probably has to go with what oil that it was seasoned with. I like to use avocado oil for seasoning cast iron because avocado oil has a smoke point of 500 to 520 degrees. And you're, you're likely not going to be cooking your food at 520 degrees. The highest that I ever put a pan under, like in my oven, is with the broiler on to 500 when I've like seared a steak and I'm cooking a steak. And with an avocado oil seasoned cast iron pan, it does not smoke. Now the, the fat in the pan may smoke, but the, the pan itself is not going to get really smoky. Often I've seen canola oil, vegetable oil, and grapeseed oil recommended for seasoning cast iron. And for a long time, that's what I did just because that's what I read. However, those do all have a lower smoke point. So when I realized that and started using avocado oil, I really just haven't looked back. Another one that's really popular is using Crisco shortening. Um, it has a really high smoke point. That's just not something I keep in my kitchen. So it's not really something that I reach for. So oils that are higher in saturated fats like coconut oil are not really optimum because they don't polymerize as much. And while you could potentially use that to season your cast iron pan and it may work to make it relatively non-stick, a lot of times what you'll end up is kind of like a tacky consistency. We talk about animal fat, like using lard or tallow to season a cast iron pan. Obviously people have been cooking out of cast iron for a really long time. This is not new technology. In fact, avocado oil is a much newer invention than cast iron which means that for a really long time the way people season their cast iron was likely with animal fats and animal fats are fine I actually cook with lard and tallow a lot I like lard and tallow and the fact that I cook in my cast iron with lard and tallow means that my pants end up with lard and tallow in the seasoning. Uh, however, they are lower smoke point oils. I think lard and tallow both are under 400 degrees uh, for their smoke, smoke point. And I, f I find that, that seasoning with them at this point does tend to potentially create more texture. I just think that with something like avocado oil, we have the opportunity to really buff it in there well and end up with that smooth, glazy finish that just cast iron users really love. The truth is you can use what you have. If you absolutely can't, go get something else. I just don't want you to go online and Google cast iron seasoning oil and end up spending 20 bucks for something that is absolutely unnecessary. All right, so this is nice and hot now. I'm gonna have to be careful not to burn myself while I make this. You could let it cool down some before you handle it. So here is another thing that you have a choice to make. I used to season cast iron by just rubbing a lot of oil all over it and cooking it for a long time. And it works. It will create the nonstick coating. But again, you may end up with that kind of tacky stickiness um, and a more textured coating on your pan, which may not be bad. That might be fine with you, but I have really come to love that smooth, glassy seasoning that cast iron can have. It just takes a little bit more work to get it. So I'm going to put just a little, um, probably a teaspoon of oil in here. And I'm gonna take a paper towel and I am going to buff this oil into the pan, allowing for the porous metal to really soak this up. I don't want it like dripping. I wanna give it a second to soak in. And you wanna go all over the pan. We want the handle, we want the sides, the back, and of course the inside. If you need to add a little bit more oil, you can do that. However, I encourage you to rub this as much as you can to really get it soaked in so that it's there's no excess. So make it stretch as far as you can. Look at that, $18 pan, isn't that beautiful? If you need to, you can get a couple more paper towels. Don't be alarmed if you've got a little bit of color on your paper towels. Remember, this is a very porous and unsealed metal that you're rubbing against. And so it's not unusual to see that. It's not a problem. All right, I just put a tiny bit more oil on my paper towels so I can start on that. Wow, that's mesmerizing. Ooh, you think so? Yeah. It's a real glow up for this pan, huh? It really is. <laughs> It goes from dirty to shiny. 
Uh huh. That's what we want. Alright. I'm feeling pretty good about how this is looking. Now this, like I said, this pan wasn't in really just terrible shape. I mean, it definitely had a good deal of rust on it and some textured places. Um, I have let cast iron pans get really gnarly in my house. I've, I've seen them just looking awful and they're just, they're never too far gone, which I think is lovely and encouraging. So for those of you who are scared to use your cast iron pan, what is the worst that could happen? Like, literally, the worst that can happen is you mess up in washing it, you forget, you leave it soaking, and then you let it sit out, or you stick it in the cabinet, and it gets orange with rust, and then you're back to the drawing board, but there's, that's it, that's the worst that can happen, is that you have to go through this process again. And as Ezra said, it's mesmerizing. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, so both of these pans are going in the 450 degree oven for one hour. And at the end of that hour, I'm just going to turn the oven off and let them sit in there for another 15 plus 20 minutes. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll just let them sit in there until they're cool. That's also okay. You can repeat this process. So if at this point when they come out of the oven, I can cook in these pans. The seasoning is going to get compounded the more fat that gets cooked on there. So what I like to do personally when I bring a cast iron pan either, either a brand new pan, even if I buy a brand new pan that says pre-seasoned, I always go ahead and go through this process. So I've never had a pre-seasoned pan right out of the box behave the way a home season cast iron pan does. Um, or if I'm re-seasoning one of my own pans, if I get a new pan that I thrifted somewhere, as soon as this process is over, I always like to just cook some fatty stuff in there for the first few times that I use it. So I would fry bacon or I would make hamburgers, um, maybe make a steak or something that's going to have a good deal of oil in it. And that's just going to further that seasoning. You could, however, if you really wanted to just like make the cream of the crop cast iron pan you could just repeat this process you could repeat it up to three or four times I think anything beyond that would be really excessive uh, but to get the nice smooth texture if you don't want to use a ton of oil from the beginning just using this small amount and and fully buffing it in um, you could repeat that and you would get a much more substantial layer of seasoning all right time to bake so now that we've established that the worst thing that can happen in you misusing your cast iron pan is that you mess up the seasoning a little bit and you have to re-season it. Um, let's talk just a little bit about how to care for your cast iron. This is not an overwhelming thing. It's, it's really not. I know that people are terrified of their cast iron and their pressure cookers, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, people's whole homes have burned down and their cast iron pan has been the lone survivor of, an, of a total loss. Like cast iron pans can hold their own no matter how negligent you think that you are, how incapable you are of doing dishes, like your cast iron pan's gonna be okay. To keep from having to do this over and over again, uh, it's best when you're done cooking to wash the pan out pretty soon, especially if there's food left sitting in the pan. You wanna get that out pretty soon. I mean, you don't have to do it like before you sit down and eat dinner, but it's best not to let it sit with stuff in it for a day or two because essentially that's gonna end up potentially breaking down your seasoning. And it's gonna allow things to dry and cake on, which will require them to be heavily scrubbed, which will, of course, risk damaging your seasoning. Um, you do not have to use soap on cast iron to get it clean. Properly seasoned cast iron does have that polymerized layer, which means that the porous metal of the pan is actually blocked from contaminants. You can use a little bit of soap if you're dealing with something that you're having a really hard time getting off. Usually for me, it's just just a few drops to scrub it off and then what I always do if I ever put soap on my pan is I go ahead and I just when I'm done washing it I set it over here on the the stove top turn the heat on and let it dry out fully by heating up and all of the water that may be down in the pores um, evaporating out and then I just put a quick layer of oil on it I do not necessarily bake it at that point but I'm just layering up the oil to make sure that my pan is well lubricated and that it doesn't have any parts that could potentially be stripped from the soap as well as damp and then potentially rust. We want to avoid rust. And in doing that, I very rarely have to doctor my cast iron paint. So this is the first time I've re-seasoned one of ours in 
at least a year. I mean, like, I this is not a common occurrence. Now, I do keep this little, it's like a chain mail mesh scrubber. Um, I'll find a link to one of these and put it in the description down below. Uh, this is what we like to clean cast iron with because it gives a little bit of a grip to really scrub uh, while not being terribly rough on the seasoning. So this is what we primarily use if we're cooking. We take the pan over, we put water on it, we scrub it out, and then from there, a lot of times I'll take a, a towel or a rag and I'll wipe it out beyond that. I'll stick it over here and dry it off. And then we hang it up over on the wall where I like to keep my cast iron. Now storage is, it's gonna come down to preference and obviously not everybody has space to hang their cast iron up on their wall. I like hanging mine on the wall because it allows it to make sure that it's fully dry whenever I put that back up I'm not as worried about water getting trapped between one pan and another and therefore rusting if you do need to stack your cast iron pan in a cabinet I suggest getting some sort of little pad or even just taking a dish towel and putting it in between your pans so that if by chance there is some moisture on one of those pans it can be soaked into something rather than being trapped between two pans because you will end up with rust that way before we say farewell well, I would like for those of you who have experience in seasoning cast iron to tell me a cast iron story. This is the greatest case that I could make for using cast iron. Everybody that loves it has one excellent story of cast iron, either a pan that they saved from the brink, a pan that was passed down for generations, a pan that they've had for a long time. I personally bought my first cast iron pan when I first moved in to a grown up big girl apartment. I was 18 years old, I think. Yeah, 18 or 19, something right in there. And I didn't know how to cook with cast iron. I promptly washed it all the wrong ways, did not use it properly, got completely overwhelmed by it, and put it in the cabinet to turn completely orange. When I later returned a few years later and really decided to turn my waiting room into a classroom, as far as my dream of growing food, um, I was like, you know what, I can learn with kitchen skills. And I pulled that old rusty cast iron out of the cabinet. I learned to season it, I learned to cook with it, and I learned to care for it. So that pan and I have been together for 20 years now, and I'm very fond of it. It's my cast iron story. I'd love to hear yours. I hope this helps you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.